The second match of the best of three, and the first match already went in favor of IPG. Coming, I don't know if coming back is the right word, because they weren't losing by that much at any point, but they managed to win towards the mid-late game pretty comfortably. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. There's not much more to say. I think Cal Raiders didn't play the best match they had. They were a bit inconsistent in their team fights, and unfortunately that led to a couple mistakes that uh, IPG could easily capitalize on. So? OBS is having a fit right now. Yep, we noticed that. Give it a second. Don't touch anything because it'll Five crash. Seconds. But uh, hopefully it's still recording us. We apologize for these things. Three. OBS will sometimes do this, particularly because of studio that. mode. I think I'm just going to relaunch it. Yeah, I guess we're going to relaunch it. I guess because the stream is on mine, right? It's Radiant's turn to pick. I'm just gonna reset. Whoa, 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 where are you going? Where are you going? Hello, what? Resend it. Resend what? That crash. Oh, okay. Well, Alvaro is going to jump out of the car real quick. We uh, have a draft now underway. Let's go ahead and uh, get into this one here. Sorry about that one, folks. Sometimes, sometimes the, uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, he just jumped. He just jumped out of the car. Yeah, see, I, I see. I told you you didn't have to do anything. The car was still moving, wasn't it? I, I'm telling you, man. There was this man kept shouting at me. I just oh, rolled. On the floor. We apologize about that here. Our broadcast software had a little bit of a crunch, but we are now back, and our draft is underway. Let's move it to the draft, please. Well, we have been for a while. Oh, great. Thank as, you. As soon as you left and showed off your pants on stream. That's not really. Yes, because I told you to wait, sit down, and you said no. Because I, because I didn't know there was nope, no. Nope. I told you exactly what was going to happen, mm -hmm. and you didn't believe me. It was a moment. It was a moment of weakness. Well, you guys didn't see. I just didn't see. They saw. They did not see. Nobody's watching the uh, pre-show. It's okay. <laughs> How races versus uh, IPG? <laughs> Watch the match, Rich. You should have just sat down and listened. I, it shouldn't have worked. Well, Last, yes, maybe crashed. maybe you should have listened to me. Okay, I will. Uh, how to about that? All right. Anyway, draft now underway here. Mom and Dad will stop fighting as IPG. This is this is just like my road trip, except I was in the backseat. I just like wearing short shorts. Okay, it's just that. Uh, don't. It's diapers. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Volca. I apologize for the indecency on stream. No indecency whatsoever. For now, though, moving on into our draft, we got the Earth Spirit and the Invoker combo, followed by the Coddle and Ember, off inside of Hellraiser, who did fall in game number one. Thank you guys for tuning in. Mm -hmm. 10 seconds. Yep. The Coddle Ember combo is a very popular combo in general. As we haven't seen it in a Five while, seconds. actually, because usually Ember doesn't get played as a carry these days. So, I mean, actually, that's one of the reasons why Jenkins was talking about how Coddle is a terrible hero, because why would you pick it with one of the what, with an Ember, which is not really useful, because the whole point of Ember Coddle is that you win the lane with Ember Coddle, and then Coddle just goes around Chakra Magic, and, you, and you're the main carry, be playing a bit more of an aggressive carry. But in this case, it's impossible, because um, the Ember Spirit is... As a carry, just seems really weak. IPG is even countering him as a mid laner as well, because both Earth Spirit and Invoker are pretty solid against him. And I'm surprised Hellraiser is still going for it. Five seconds. Honestly, I think there's better combos with Coddle in this game. Yeah, I, I, I've seen it done plenty of times. Though. The CIS region still prefers it. Uh, when I was casting the other tournament, they actually did it themselves. Carry Ember times. themselves? Oh uh, no, it's still in the mid lane Ember actually, uh, I mean, and they, they just use it for the team fight. Sometimes it's uh, a Falcon Blade into um, Desolator uh, on the Ember Spear, and it still works fine in fights. Sometimes a Maelstrom instead of the Deso if you want a little bit of mixed damage here. So, as, I mean, I agree, it's no longer as strong as it used to be because Carry Ember is is, is not really a, a thing that's done anymore. Exactly. But uh, it's, it still has its, its points of, of being strong. Okay, I mean, I don't think the combo is, bar is bad, mind, mind you. Yeah, I just yeah. think that the combo, particularly against Invoker, which is definitely a quasi-wax Invoker this game, and an Earth Spray is going to be a bit tougher, right? Because Invoker just dispels your, your uh, Flame Guard. The one thing that's good about this is that Ember against Invoker oh, usually goes for a Slight of Fist and Searing Chains build, and that's the exact build you want to go for if you want to take advantage of the Coddle. So... At least, you're not being too crushed. It's not like you're getting a Monkey King mid, which would destroy you, right? Invoker will have a much easier time. Yeah. He will. Invoker so, wears pants as well. <laughs> Either way. It's my uh, car. Uh, well, do you have a driver's license? Doesn't matter. Uh, well. I don't believe in... Uh, 
I'm a sovereign citizen. Is exactly. that a thing in Europe? What? Is that a thing? Do you guys have sovereign citizens in Europe? What does that mean? Oh, you like, don't then. Uh, you like I'm a sovereign citizen of my own country? Or? No, no, no. Never mind. I'll explain it later. It's not worth getting into. Yeah, the second phase of bans coming through here. They banned the Morphling and the PA, so lots of carries now banned out. The Wraith King's still available in the pool, uh, should IPG want to run that one again. Uh, with the Invoker these days, though, I'd be curious. I mean, it's still a bit flexible. I would say Quas Exhort definitely is more playable than it used to be. Before, it used to only be Quas Wex all the time, and I yeah. still think that's in competitive generally more of what's played. And it's helped out a little bit because now there's a couple more intermediary items you can go for instead of awkwardly transitioning after the vessel. I guess I get BKB eggs. Yeah, people nowadays are actually not committing so hard to the Quas Wex. You usually mm -hmm. go for Quas Wex with like a, an urn, and you go Quas Wex for the early game, right? And then once you have enough points in Quas, which usually are the four points, because now it's back to the Forge Spirits being like it used to be, you then transition into the Exhort points. Still maxing Wex, of course. So it's closer to how the old, it's close to how older Quas Wex Invokers were, where like you did commit for the early because the laning was uh, was kind of, or the early game was kind of strong, and then you still go for the damage as the game progresses, allowing Invoker to be a solid hero at most stages of the game, which is great, right? Invoker's very happy about this, and you have the Alacrity as well buff, which Quaswex Invokers loved using to get rid of the Will-O-Wisp, which Cottle will eventually have, and also buff whatever carry you use. I'm liking IPG's lineup a lot right now, and Ladon, we already saw a great performance by the Earth Spirit yesterday, or last game, sorry. Oh, yeah, last game, yeah. So, um, and, I, probably, and probably yesterday, he probably played in a pub yesterday. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching with on in his free time as well, of course. Enchantress, in case you needed more dispels, then you have two kinds of offensive dispels, so Invoker and Enchantress, which limits your pool of carries a fair amount. Uh, any any pool, any carry that's looking to buff himself, or herself rather, uh, it's not possible to pick anymore. So Ursa particularly out of the pool, uh, things like, I don't know, the PA for example, even with a blink strike is pretty bad. You can stop the Wraith King or any sort of melee carry that wants to go at you. This is, is kind of tough, honestly. Even carries that bring Satanic to the table, for example, can, are in trouble here. It limits your supports uh, as well to some degree. Of course, you're probably not going to see the ET picked up by Hellraisers because almost certainly no matter what lane he goes in or if he tries to get mid lane, he's going to be completely shut down. Uh, but yeah, the Ench is going to be incredibly annoying. It beats other heroes. I mean, it's not even worth bringing up, but, but beats someone like uh, the Undying in the lane. But it's actually kind of weak to the Coddle, um, just because, yeah. yeah, just because Illuminate, I mean, she's got no HP to deal with, obviously. Coddle yeah. just harasses with Illuminate the entire lane, and it's even better, because Ench usually doesn't stand near the creep anyway. This lane, she probably will, so if Coddle wants to Illuminate Blaster, he's going to have to push the wave, which carries hate. Well, that's assuming if you're if you're actually for Coddle, right? Because usually Coddle is played as five these days, right? That's so, true. Uh, so we'll see how they try to lane against each other. In the mid-game, Coddle is not that great against Enchantress because his best asset is there we go okay so they're going to run a Coddle 4 or it seems like it because Ogre Magi typically a 5 but what's weird about picking an Ogre Magi is that what do you do that's so great about him well Bloodlust and what does IPG have two dispels so your Bloodlust is not going to be very useful this game no no yeah it's, it's really just a lane support right now that you're picking and yeah I don't know uh, that's that's a good point yeah, you, you bring a lot of damage as well to the lane, because for all the dispels we have, they're only targetable onto enemies, which means that you can't actually dispel the things you'd like, like Ignite, right? Ignite is, at, at the current moment, set to just uh, sit its current duration on top of you if, if it That's gets so applied, uh, which is really annoying, especially against someone like the Earth Spirit, if it is going to be the Ogre 5, because then Coddle can very freely go for the uh, Orb of Venom and Ignite build, and he just craps on Earth Spirit, pretty much. Yep, There's yep, not yep. really much he can do. Earth Spirit can try and kick him away. You can roll him boulder away, but Ogre is just going to be way too big and beefy despite being uh, an int... Uh, oh, is Ogre, Ogre is an int hero, right? Yeah, 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 yeah despite, good despite good. Earth Spirit being the uh, the strength hero there. Yeah, yeah. But the thing about it that I don't love is that Ogre right now, usually how Ogre is played is you're a really strong early game support, of course, right? Then your mid game is more... You're, like, you're a buffer and then late game, like literally someone that buffs people, not a buffer. And uh, late game, uh, the Ogre Magi becomes a bit more of a... Actually brings a fair amount of stuns and, and damage to yeah, the table, right? Yeah, lockdown, especially with a singular enemy targeted yeah, exactly. item. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. but in this case though, Ogre Magi won't have that ability. And now he have, we have also the defensive dispel in the case of the Rage and the Lifestealer, which is going to deal well with the Ogre, and also pretty good against Cardo Lifestealer. Um, actually, this might be a game where you consider, I know it's not a very popular item, but the Shard to get open wounds, that used to be such a counter to Cardo. You just hit him with the open wounds once and Cardo is done for, you know, because he has no way of, of, of getting away. And especially a 4 Cardo 
goal until you get a four staff, the goal frenzy will already be enough to deal with you. Yep, Solar Bind's not going to do a single darn thing against Life Stealer. Yes. Although you can kind of bait him because if you Solar Bind him, Life Stealer is just going to rage it off so he can keep chasing you. But then that opens it up to to, to be encounter initiated because you also kind of want to steal. Sorry, you want to save the rage for something. I don't know, maybe a Searing Chains to follow up in yep. case you need to TP. Perhaps even Ogre, right? You don't want to get stunned by him. Uh, so it's, so it's a bit risky. You, you do have to kind of uh, temper your usage there of the dispel as to not get baited by a coddle. And, and we see that a lot because, like, let's face it, coddle basically is a free kill all the time, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, at any stage of the game. So cores love diving him up to I, and including the Ember. For certain heroes, right? For certain heroes, is a free kill. Anyone with a slower stun, easy to kill coddle. But if not, you have to be a bit more careful. No, there's, there's a the, buffer. Okay, there's the <laughs> there's the combo that uh, coddle was actually looking for, right? So I'm assuming there's a person like offlane just because it looks like it's coddle 4. Yep. And that would work nicely. It's also pretty strong against life stealer. I mean, Lester can sustain himself in this lane. It's not impossible for him. It's about playing really smart with the quill sprays, you know, getting a magic stick early, which Life Stealer usually doesn't like. And then Chantis can help out against Bristleback. It's not a lost lane, but it's still very strong for Hellraisers. I like how they're making sure that this game. They're going for the early game strat again, but they have much more late game capability. Because Bristleback is a good laner, but with his level 25, he becomes a really solid late game carry. Yep, and Ember can build like a carry, especially if he goes for the yes. physical damage build with the 25 talents and a coddle. Ooh, mama, we're talking some yeah. real serious damage there. Especially, what, you get the, maybe the slide of fist damage as well, or slide of fist two charges as well. Yep, yeah, that's what I thought about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, basically, but, basically three charges of slide of fist. Oh, yeah, it's, exactly. it's incredible. Uh, and then the Searing Chains combo, of course, is refresh all your spells. You might even get a cool little flame guard. It's insane. This combo is really, really powerful for the late game. Yeah, and you've got Bristle to carry you in the early game. Uh, Ember can even afford to go for a, a bit more of utility build. Right now, it's not really the case because, I mean, Halberd is not so strong. Why bother with a Vessel? I yep. think it's it's probably ought to be, at most, maybe the mixed damage build of a Maelstrom. But even then, against a Life Stealer, I feel like you just want to go for physical anyway, right? Yeah, I think that's always a good idea. I mean, I know that it's not very popular here. It's most popular in North America, mm -hmm. where Rioja builds it every game. But I think that it's still a viable build this game. The only thing I don't like about Bristle this game, though, is that Invoker is very good if it goes cross flex against Bristle, because obviously you just Tornado EMP, and Bristle feels very useless. That's true. Yeah, we, we've got a very natural Vessel builder in the Invoker, even if he doesn't go Vessel straight away. Either he, Invoker he, or Earthspit or Enchanters all are pretty decent Vessel builders. Yeah, but, but the, the scary thing about Invoker being able to build one is that naturally he's going to get way more farm than the Earthspit at the end, so it's going to be up even earlier where Bristle would like to get a couple kills here and there, but when the Vessel's up, it's like, oh no, I'm Vesseled and I'm going to be dying very yes. quickly. That's, that's why I, I bring it up. Uh, uh, because, yeah, I mean, Earth Spirit, I mean, if he has got a great game, 15, 17 minute vessel, that's pretty decent with boots. Uh, but Invoker can get like a 12 minute vessel. Exactly, and that's that's really scary because at that point, Bristol's like, all right, guys, I'm level 7, I have max cool spray, let's run. And then, it, oh, shit, they have a. Yep. Yeah. As options against. Br right now, each for your offlaner, unfortunately, you don't. Oh, actually, you will know your lane match. His last pick is for IPG, so this is tough for Hellraisers. Because right now, as, as IPG, just ban the, the carries you think are strongest that you wouldn't be able to deal with, which, of course, Slark. What other carries would be nice? Honestly, against Life Stealer? I mean, the Jug, because he's also a pretty solid hero. Good against Invoker as well. Jug might be an, an idea. But you just ban the carries that you think will counter the offlaners you're thinking about, and then you get to counter their hero, no matter what, right? It's very yeah. difficult for Hellraisers to win this offlane. That's do. a joke. I wonder what Hellraisers are going to be left with here, then. You know, I, I, honestly, I think Weaver's pretty decent this game, again. Weaver's not weak against Invoker, has a lot of mobility for Lifestealer, brings yeah. extra physical uh, reduction. He's a bit, I mean, he's not weak to the Ench, I wouldn't say, but he's weak to the support duo, right? Because a slow the a slow on both, right, is going to be easily, to, easily able to set up a stun. He's not able to run away with Sakuchi as he'd like to, because the Airspirit will catch up to him. I like this instead. Yeah, the Dusa, a little bit tankier, able to stand her ground and fight. In fact, no one really wants to look at her. BKB piercing disabled with the ultimate. Yeah. They can also use as basically a Naga Siren get out of jail free card if you get caught farming. Yeah, um, yeah I, I actually I really like the, uh, the Medusa pick here. But again, Invoker, Invoker's countering the whole lineup of Hellraiser. He is, yeah. He's really wanted to go Quas Wex here this game. I mean, it's so good. It counters Bristol, Medusa, and Ember. I mean, and even yeah. the Ogre to some degree. Uh, IPG now seeing the Dusa. Very few offlaners that can beat the Dusa in lane. Usually ranged ones like NP or Snapfire, but I don't particularly love those this game. Thinking of what you could run. Yeah, me too. I don't see anything too amazing here either. You can go for something like just ignores the lane, like Underlord, which is pretty decent against Bristle. Yeah, I like it versus the Ember. Gives you a little bit of root, a little bit more lockdown. Oh, okay. The Viper for the break. Yeah, the yeah, versus, off the, versus the Bristle. Yeah, he's a ranged offlaner. Lots of DPS, so even if you're not on top of the Dusa, you're still going to be burning through her mana shield as well. Yeah. Yeah. I and, and, yeah, I don't disagree with the Viper pickup. I think it's a pretty solid pickup here. The... 
Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's pretty solid. You can disable multicast, by the way, with the break. That is yep. a thing. Uh, what else? I think that's about all you have to disable this game, and of course, Bristleback itself. Yeah, it's multi shot. You can't disable. Right? I don't believe now you that, can. Now, now that it's toggleable, I don't believe you can. Yeah, you used to be able to on the old one when you couldn't control it. As yep. soon as you leveled it, it was just like um, I guess I'm multi shotting. But but now now you do get the the option. All right. So the Viper is. Yeah, the the Viper pick is is good this game, particularly because you have a lot of team fights in your four and your two, right? So usually when you pick an offlaner like Bloodseeker or B Viper or Bristleback, who doesn't bring team fighter control to the table, you want some sort of control elsewhere, which is was actually the issue by Hellraiser's last game. They picked an MP and they're like, "Where's my team fight? Nowhere," because yeah, yeah. your supports didn't bring it. So in this case, I like the Viper pick much more because the Invoker Nurse Spirit mitigates for your weaknesses. So I actually think it's a it's a really solid pick. Yeah, he's super strong in the lane as well. He doesn't yeah. care about Ogre at all. Ogre does not want to be anywhere near him. No, he might even. Be a free kill for Viper. And, and in fact, I think he, he will be. Um, Earth Spirit Viper is going to be, I mean, the, the two green boys that are going to run you down here. Uh, it's going to be quite a deadly lane. So, IPG, I really do actually prefer the draft. Not only does this Invoker have a very, very, I think, easy itemization this game that, that really incentivizes him, but I think this offlane is going to be able to get off to a wild start. I like the draft more as well, but I do find that Hellraisers this time is a much easier draft to execute. Uh, so, I like if uh, Hellraisers, I think last game we saw the Hellraisers just kind of drop the ball early and then from then on, it was impossible for them to come back. This game, you might have a better chance simply because the Dusa will always give you a fighting chance. I mean, this late game by Hellraiser is ridiculously better. Even if you don't have as much team fight, well, you don't have as much team fight as the enemy team. Not, they don't like they have that much. You still have the Stone Gaze. And you'll eventually have the Willow Wiz. You'll have the items that Ogre or Bristol or Ember build as well for extra control. But once you have enough farm, Howard is just fine. But the problem is getting there. And I'm pretty sure that IPG wants to play this as fast as possible. Yeah, by the looks of it, yeah. We, we might be able to even get it before... Uh, I, I mean, rather, I think they might be able to even finish this game off before uh, Invokers got, like, either Quaswex or Exhort maxed. Yeah. Uh, I, it just it looks like they can really get off to quite the fast start. Uh, interesting, obviously, this is going to be the... Um, for our life stealer, it's going to be... The, oh, it looks like... Oh, now here he is in the mid lane. The camera's baiting me. He's going for the over corrosion first, so even he is going to be looking... To to be interested in fighting early on. Now that you don't have the open wound slow, naturally, <clears throat> and the much weaker but more pa more active slow that is Ghoul Frenzy, yep. uh, it's, you, you might think that's a little bit weak, but not to worry, because of course you have the Enchantress there with you with one of the strongest slows at level one yes. uh, that is going to be able to utilize that. Or she can pull out a, a Mr. Stompy Creep or a Hill Troll Summoner. There's so many different ways that you can actually get additional lockdown here for the Lifestealer to, to get many, many kills on this, in his offlane. Yeah, and, and the thing about Lifestealer is that also they made the Ghoul Frenzy a thing, right? You want to max that as early as possible. Possible. Some of the things that kind of suck for you because you want to keep applying the slow, of course, is that if they do get some nice stuns between your rages or if they manage to lock you down so you can't get that magic immunity off, you can become kind of weak and easily kiteable hero. The thing is, you really only have a Searing Chains and a Fire Blast for the enemy team. Maybe Blinding Light if you're counting like a repositioning, mm, right? Okay. But unfortunately, I don't think it's enough to stop this lifestealer. Similarly, you on your team actually have a fair amount of lockdown just with the Earth Spirit alone and of course the Invoker. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the reason for the boss go go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, that sounds pissed at all. I'm sure if someone was taking a quick smoke break or something like that, perhaps, and now we're going to get to go quick bathroom break or something during the draft. And you should have eaten bathroom break, I'm telling you, man. You wear your pocket. <laughs> oh, no. There right, we go here. Our spirit getting off to uh, a rolling start. He was actually going for the boost, interesting enough. So it is going to be just all aggro here in this off lane. Uh, in fact, they are going to be going for the rip as well. As well, do so, though, considering the fact that she's all alone up here. There's really no chance they can get her because she's just going to hide behind a tier 1 tower. Um, I mean, they see her, though. They could dive, honestly. They have pretty good heroes for diving. <laughs> like, dude, Kuben's having a... He's playing that game where you spin in a chair a bunch of times and see if you can get to the finish line. No, I've never gotten to those summer camps, so they do that to you. No. Sex. Really? Because <laughs> I just what kind of summer camps are you going to? I know, it was my two parents locked me in a room and they kept spinning me in a chair. Oh, is that no. not what you, summer camp is? Oh no. <laughs> anyway, Kuma, <laughs> he's gonna get, I, he's making me dizzy, not gonna lie right now. And they're all waiting here patiently. They're laughing. They see him. Kuman doesn't know what's going on. No, I mean, they, they can. The yeah, they can. He's just doing a little bit of spinning. That's Diving like, is too dangerous. Yeah, that's what I do as well when the game stretches to make your hero spin. Something uh, that you can do in Dota because it's a great game. Oh, it's true because you actually had to, had to check the turn rate and everything, right? You have a turn rate. 
Other games just spin immediately and you go, what is this sorcery? What is this? It's too fast. I sure. can't do it. Middle lane here, Young G, once again standing in for the side of Hellraiser. Just did, didn't do too, too poorly last game here, but I'm sure he's going to be looking for a much better start here. Uh, he's going to be laning versus the Invoker, which is going to be rather... Uh, it's going to be a bit of a difficult matchup because he's not going to be incentivized to go for the Flame Guard. Of course, this is going to be, uh, as we predicted, a Crosswax Invoker, so he's going to be able to, from level 2... Yeah, there, there it is, of course, uh, slightly for level 1, which, which is going to slow down his farm in the jungle just a little bit, but does make his ganking potential that much better. Yeah, exactly. Don't get to go watch some Volker. You just can't go for it. No, the there's, there's no point. I mean, you. Uh, so I've seen some members try to do it if they have a really bad lane, but it's not like Quaswex and Volker's laning stage is that strong. Usually you lack attack damage, and so Ember can at least trade with you evenly. Like, this matchup is bad for Ember, but mostly about the mid game. The lane, he can mitigate it somewhat. Yep. What does suck, though, is that your slight of fist harassment, it's like you just wait until Invoker hits level 3, he has two points in Quas, and then there's no more harassment. And score. Only the other Toxin, I don't think, is enough to kill him, though. Yep, and the Enchant used there just to make sure he takes all all the poison damage that he can. This is, however, oops, maybe some trouble in the mid. No, he's okay for now, but uh, this is not too easy for Rari. There's on Doha TPing on over as they, they get the fail to kill attempt up top, so he's going to just TP on in. Careful of those quills, though. They are sharp. They are sharp, but all you need to do in this matchup, because Life Theater has his own sustain, right, with the... Uh, once he gets the feast, mm -hmm. then you're capable of just walking out once the Quill Spray has been used a couple times on you, waiting for that timer to reset, and then, of course, using Magic Stick plus your feast to recover your full HP. So it's not too bad a matchup, like, on a Life Stealer. He's one of the few melee heroes that can deal with Bursa Buck. If you're playing some, like, Slark, for example, or any hero has no sustain, Juggernaut as well, you're like, whew. Yeah, yeah it, it sucks. I, you gotta be careful of that double, uh, double Quill Spray, though. Maybe even triple there um, to on Doha is uh, they really do quite add up. I mean, the, the stack damage even at level one is pretty crazy when you get up there, and uh, and that when you get two of them, it, it almost feels like it could be an extra level uh, or a level higher than it really is. Rather, exactly. And even though Enchanter is pretty good at uh, oh wait. That's cold in the middle lane. Could be in trouble. Slide of fist. Fair amount of damage. Young G just needs the extra slide of fist, but there's a fairy fire on him. Two points and quads as well. And I like that Young G is going for, you know, he, he is attempting to get kills here, essentially. You're not just harassing, you're going for initiations that will net you a kill on the Invoker, because otherwise he'll just heal with Quaz. That was an easy first blood. Yeah, and that's, that's how easy it is, really. Lil just gotta have to coddle, gift me mana, and that's about it. That's all it takes. Uh, that did take all the uh, regen that Rezo actually had, but he's now going to have boots, which make the kills a little bit easier. And I imagine he's got a sail coming on that courier here uh, yeah. quite soon as well. Boots is a big turning point in this lane, so he can outrun the... Uh, so you can outrun the quills, of course. But that was a, it's still a bit of a mess up with the life stealer. Early, it's all about how far can you go for farm. Oh, top lane. They're going for the Medusa. They do get the rolling bold, or the boulder smash slow on her. But the body block by the ogre is perfect, honestly. Trying to save Kuman Supernova. Constraining and killing Kuman thinks, well, I might as well murder Vanscore if he wants to body block me this bad. He has mangoes. Vanscore tanking this nicely. He's trying to get the max damage with that poison attack, and he will accomplish it. Vanscore ends up losing his life. I think worthwhile, considering that you saved your carry from dying, but still, sucks. Uh, just being super annoying, you can purge off healing self, of course. Oh, even, right, so even though Enchant that. doesn't do any damage, you still purge it off. Oh, that's so, so stupid. <laughs> Yeah, and that's going to be here a really, really tight mid lane as well in terms of CS. 15 and 3 compared to the 11 and 4, but the HP is even closer as they eventually will strike back there at the Doe for canceling the Sal. But that's kind of a kill well worth it, to be honest, for at least for Anto. He's going to come back to the lane full HP, full mana, and just look to keep doing more of the same. Denied. Might even TP mid, do it now that invokers don't build bottles. How silly of me. Yeah, exactly. There's no need to you, for you to... Oh, he's going to TP mid anyway. Okay. Invoker's like, dude, what? Oh, he gives him a tango instead. <laughs> this is the uh, poor man's bottle, I guess. Rolling board, secure rune. Okay, he does do that to secure the rune. Fair enough. I mean, Ember does have a bottle, I want to say. Young G. Yeah, so you take away that rune from him. That's good. And there's there's no capability of Hellraisers to rotate their four because their four is a coddle. So, <laughs> this coddle's like, what do I do to, to try to take the rune? Yeah, no, that's a good point here. The coddle, he is strong, but only in the lane. You're not really too scared of actually a ganking coddle because what is he going to do? Walk up to your lane, stand in vision, and channel a spell for four seconds? Like, I think oh, these guys can probably, you know, see that one coming and, and get out of the way. Yep. And the top lane, there's going to be Supernova in trouble. 
Uh, okay, he's fighting Kuman to the death, but I think it's his death, though. Supernova it helps out with a magic stake, and he might get the kill against Kuman. The poison attack's still taking him down, but he had a mango to save himself, and Ladon is unable to finish off Kuman. Well played. Never thought of a mango as healing for Dusa, but it yeah. worked out for them. Effective healing, that's actually why the Coddle is uh, particularly strong in this game. It can give you yes. a little bit more uh, HP, or at least effective HP here for the Dusa, but a nice rolling boulder there to snatch away the bounty. He might be dead for that, uh, but nope, there's no mana here on the Ogre. Completely out of Regen. Yep, losing the Viper there. I mean, even again, even Viper versus Dusa is just a, not the best lane. Oh, oh, this is a yeah. I don't know though. No, no. There's no slide of fist yet. Yeah. He's gonna be okay. There's no chakra magic there either. But yeah, the Viper Dusa matchup, even though Viper can do it better than most off laner, it's still not an easy matchup for Viper. Dusa is a really strong. No, player. no. I mean. <clears throat> But I mean, when he's alone, he is still vulnerable to the two of them, uh, just because there is going to be, uh, I mean, you harass so effectively with the uh, Mystic Snake. Now Invoker, though, with a couple of points in the, well, let's see, but it just levels, right? He's capable of actually fighting in the Ember. He has some nice damage as well. Also has the Urn, double Null. He's quite happy with this lane. Soon yep. the Ember's going to be pushed out and forced to rotate some other lane. But what do you gank as Ember? Because top Viper, maybe? Yeah. Uh, bottom Life Stealer is too tough, honestly. I mean, maybe it's worth it just for the Ench, because then you can actually get some tower pressure applied here with the Bristleback. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that until you're level 6, because then with War Path stacks, you, you can just hit levels. Oh, when Bristle. When Bristle. Yeah, because then, you know, you need some tower damage. And actually, Bristle's tower damage, not too bad because of the War Path. Path and passive, I should say. Nice. Oh, that, he still got hit by the Illuminate. Yeah, he did. I could have sworn that rage came before the Illuminate, but I guess those horses were just a bit... Uh, that, that, that got uh, hit them weirdly. Ogre Magi is going to be broken and killed. Supernova says, I can't. I might not be able to kill you, Kuman, but I'm going to make your support cry. And Doha in the bottom lane, similarly. Yeah. Resolution wants to do the same. Wow. Both supports fives in this game. Might go for more. Yeah, this is what we're talking about, right? That's what the rotation is for. You kill the enchanters, and this allows you free way to just go for the life stealer. Yep. Uh, I mean, unfortunately for Hellraiser, they get bo they kick both people out of the lane. One with a short trip back to the fountain, the other one will actually TP only to the tier two, so it's not too out of the lane. But uh, again, w without Warpath and without a wagon, you, you don't really threaten the push. You can do this sort of timber saw push, though, which I guess Bristle is fantastic at doing. He's going to try and farm camps here. Unfortunately, he's going to find them all blocked. And he blocks the, them yeah. himself now. Yeah, he has a sentry blocking one, and then he blocks the uh, other there's one. There's a gang coming top lane, though. Uh, there is a gang coming top lane. Let's see. And Ogre's not here, but Medusa reads this quite easily. Because I, I don't know. Earth Spirit's not there. Well, sorry, Enchanter's not there. Yeah. Lifestar's still alone bottom. In fact, Lifestar's being gone on bottom. Yeah, they're chasing after him. The Solar Pine's been used on a... Okay. This, this creep! I absolutely hate this creep. Look at him. He's leading the charge. He thinks he's so cool. Yeah, you, gotta, you, 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 got, you can't let him get two. You, you know, they're, they're just creep. They're not heroes. You gotta exactly. put him in their place. Hit him with the solar vine. Hit him with a doom every now and then. That's one of know. my favorite, uh, by the way, parodies in Dota. Uh, the song parody of Creep, when they call I'm just a creep. I'm not a hero. It's a great Frank song parody. I think it was called Refresher Parodies, the channel. Old, old channel. Hmm. Shout out. If they're still alive. Anyway. <laughs> Now Skold, he has the boots now. I don't know if he's going to go for Vessel early. Usually Invokers don't rush the Vessel that much. So they, there's a variety of things like Solar Crest, Force Staff. Depends on how much you want to play as Utility. Or, or sometimes just go for the Orchid even. Oh. We've seen Orchid recently. Ember's got a free kill rune here, the Haste rune. Let's see where he decides to use this. As there is the gank in our spirit. Currently heading bot lane. But you can't kill the person. Yeah, he's just too out of a kill now. Especially because he is level 6. So he can just easily turn around and kick your butt. Nearly has the, the complete right, Hood of Defiance. Oh, it's Supernova. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, now now Supernova can kill him. Yeah, here we go. There we go. And they take away. Oh, that break is brutal. And poison attack just takes him down. Supernova will force two rotations, though, as Ladon will have to sacrifice himself. The tornado dispels a haste rune. Well, Ladon's still very slow. He EMP is on the mouth. Zimboka might be helping out enough. But Ladon needs a bit more help. He got Searing Chain. Now nope. like, dude, I did what I could. I used all my spells. Except for You're Cold Snap. I'm missing out on experience, dude. You, you would get it if you played mid lane. Okay. Well, there. Hellraisers, they do get a nice kill there, bottom, a counter kill I would say, but still the Viper rotating is good as they give Rari the much easier lane up top. Bristleback of course will not chase him, and Rari's like, I just want to get rid of this guy, please, someone. Yeah. He's, he's thinking of um, filing a restraining order against Bristleback. Yeah, I mean, and, and unfortunately they've loved this battle, and they are going to go for a second kill here on to Reza, however, the Viper is nearby, has the Viper Strike at the ready, and they're going to read this one and recall him all the way back to the bot lane, where instead they're going to push Mirrored here. That's a nice thing that 
about Lil here on the uh, Coddle is that he actually can push the waves all by himself. This man can siege towers, as unlikely as uh, as a hero it would seem. Very similar to uh, Bristol Black or uh, Timber Soft Siege Towers, right? Where you just like push the lane, you the creeps do most of the work, and you help out just by existing. Uh, yeah. Now they're gonna push the top lane though, and they're gonna accomplish the same thing. I mean, honestly, Viper's very similar to Coddle in that sense. He clears waves really easily, and this tower in the top. I don't know over corrosion actually affect the towers or the poison. It does. Yeah. That's okay. Interesting. Extra three damage a it, second. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah, I mean, it's because the, the, the debuff has to, right? Because otherwise, oh, right, what's the point of the minus armor? Uh, I guess that makes sense, because Blightstone already affects it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. And I, just never, I never considered it, because I always thought, or Venom can't hit towers, right? Radiant's nope. bottom tower is under... T.I.L. Anyway, the Enchantress is going to get Searing Chained, but brother against brother action. Dyer's Turns out Young G had a remnant ready. They want to take away his... I mean, he has no mana already. He has remnants, but he can't go to them. However, they haven't checked out his mana pool, so they don't know how much they can chase this. Well, he's got enough for one remnant at least. He's going to go and TP on home, and he'll be back soon enough here with the uh, bottle he's able to consume there in the fountain. My PG, nice little. For now, they're just they're just managing to um, withstand the pressure that Hellraiser wants to put up. They're they're trying to put their own pressure against the Medusa, but I don't think until Life gets his first or second item or Invoker is ready to fight. Askold is now finally rotating. There's a nice little rotation by Askold. Let's see if they can kill Resolution. I think without the Viper, it's kind of impossible, though. Yeah, I agree. Viper currently pushing, or farming, rather, in the top jungle as well. So he, he really doesn't want anything to do with here. Super he's going for mech. Yep, going for the mech. So he just wants to be the tanky frontliner. And I think that's the move, because by the looks of it, yeah, it's going to be not quite a slow start to the life stealer, but he's just simply not going to be ready to fight in time, uh, whereas his Viper will be. And they need something to hold back the bristle back. although I say that, and here he comes. Let me tanky, but I don't think he's tanky enough to withstand four heroes. That call will take it advantage of his recall yet again to create a favorable engagement for them. And now Hellraiser are very happy with this early game. And IPG, if they want to win this, they need to really recover in this mid game. I thought, I thought the Invoker would have much more impact, but he's had zero successful rotations right now. Yep. Still no earn charges. Still no earn charges, and that's really mm -hmm. where oh, Quaspox oh. Invoker can sink or swim here. Go uh, for Witchblade. Mm -hmm. That's... Okay, interesting. Yeah, I mean, Booker has the second highest intelligence game in the game. Exactly, yeah, that's that's the idea. And that's kind of what I was talking about when I was talking about sometimes you see them go for the intermediate items, which which does help actually a lot of the Quaswex invokers because they did have this really weird fall-off point at like minute 22 where it's like, well, I have Medallion now and I'm just basically an offlaner yep. uh, before they, they actually got points into the Exorc. So I, I do like, I, I still think this invoker has the chance of being relevant, of course, as of this moment without any earn charges. He's, he just feels a bit impotent, although they're looking to change that. That is top lane. They will go onto the bristle back. Don has got a friend inside of him. They're going to pop out now. And Rezo, as tanky as he is, will perish there to the tornado. But the brother now ganking in the middle lane. It's the Ember Spirit. They're going to be able to return a kill onto one. Now make it two. Maybe looking for more with the Chakra Magic. We've got Searing Chains ready again. And he will actually find him. Three kills then in exchange for the bristle back. Rari will be allowed to live here most likely because he's got Rage. Oh, I don't know. Uh, rage TP. Fair amount of damage thanks to that double slide of Fist. That almost died there, honestly. In the middle lane, they also catch the Viper who is pushing alone. Super Nola going to get punished by that Fire Blast. That's going to be the second kill that Hell Raises takes. Or sorry, third kill, rather. Fourth and, kill. Oh, yeah, because the Enchanters also died. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was a huge cleanup up top. And this time, I feel like IPG is playing similar to last game in the sense that they're try kind of spreading out the map and then and then uh, trying to take advantage of all the resources. They're putting pressure with um, the Viper mid. Very similar to what Tyner was doing last game. However, you don't have a Titaner. You have a Viper. Your team fight is not as strong, so you can't counter initiate as effectively. So Hellraiser is just taking advantage of this, and they're playing the game they know how to, which is dividing all your heroes around the map, taking easy kills, and just fighting skirmishes that benefit you, especially taking advantage of the Caudal's movement. I mean, Caudal has been yeah, such yeah. a crucial hero in this game. Uh, the old uh, D&D, as they say in the Eastern European right region, divide and divide. <laughs> How many DDs do you have in the chain? Oh, I've got so many, dude. Okay, all right. So the life steal, the, the Ember's gonna go for Desolator in the end. So it's gonna be the build that we suggested in the draft. I'm glad. I think it's gonna add a lot of damage to your team while IPG recovers by trying to go for a kill here. Again, though, I hear a recall. There's a Bristol backpack with an EMP. Vanscore can't. They're not gonna kill Vanscore. He's quite a tanky support. No, no, they the trouble. Ogre, no, it's actually the Invoker who yep. is just gonna die. He, he thought that he could get away with that, but the Searing Chains plus Light of Fist combo together with the Coddle is just still too powerful. Oh, they recall. Another recall with the Ember this time. Again, this Coddle is being huge. They avoid Nether Toxin for now as the Ember tries to help out Supernova. Okay, will be successful. Big not, not even with a mech is gonna accomplish much. He does get hit by the Magnetize though. That's gonna guarantee the kill. And since Ladon has a haste rune, he's capable of getting away. 
Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the Invoker just, he feels like he's a lot stronger than he actually is by the looks of it. He tries to get that kill there from the fog, and he stands his ground and fight well after the rest of his team is actually backing up and leaving him. Uh, and the Ember is just, thanks to this Coddle, kind of just even more all over the place. Second charge there of the uh, Searing Chains really holding down Invoker a lot longer than he thought he would. No point there, and of course, casting the Ghost Walk, he would have been scattered immediately. Tough game for our Invoker. It is a little bit of space created for our Life Stealer, but he's actually so far being eclipsed in farm here by the Dusa, who already has got a natural farming advantage, but also has a Midas this game. Yeah, and um, Midas is going to help her a lot in the experience department as well to make sure she's above the Life Stealer at any point. If she gets a nice Scotty, I don't think Life Stealer can do much. Here's an initiation, though, by IPG. I can go for the Ogre, but Ogre's just taking his gank. They might even be able to kind of initiate here. Resolution's nearby. And the Dusa also has her ultimate, Kuman. We'll see. Viper seems to be the target. Young G's just keeping his distance using a side of his chains. Again, there's a stone gate used by Dusa. Kuman, not afraid of them. They're just gonna continue fighting. Force Life Stealer away. Supernova's going to die. Ladon stuck in the back lines, but they're going for a much more valuable kill in Askold. They hit him with the Searing Chains, and Young G has another Slide of Fist just in case, waiting for the disarm to disappear. There's the Searing Chains, and Slide of Fist to finish him off. <laughs> yep. Nice target probably there from Hellraisers. They're like, yeah, why bother for the Earth Spirit? He's just annoying. Uh, uh, let's yeah. instead get the important kills. We're not seeing any of the impact we expected from IPG early, particularly as Invoker. Particularly the Invoker, yeah, I completely agree with you. I for sure thought it was going to be way stronger than this, but and they're trying. They, they're trying, bless their souls, but uh, something's not clicking here. And then it's Hellraiser's now with a 6k worth, net worth lead, rather 60 minutes in. Mm -hmm. Of course, kills don't mean much, but they are leading by 9. Yep. And now they've got the mid-tier 1 tower, so they've also got now a tower advantage to their name. I mean, and not like they needed it, right? Because the late game is already better. That's what scares me. Is that they they played a late game draft. IPG was trying to play uh -oh. an early mid game. They know Rari's nearby. They found his courier. Yeah, but okay, maybe they might not catch where the courier's going, right? I think it was going to secret shop. Yep, or they've, they've got a ward here oh, as well. Oh, the courier might have seen him. Yep, now they're gonna scout him. Oh, nice, no, saw him. There we go. Rari's like, why? But on CP and then he's trying to do something here. The Coddle is getting dove in as well. The mid on strike. Yeah, he's going to be able to find a kill. There we go. And Roker is getting a little bit of a better start now. Razo is going to be able to tank this for <laughs> about forever as they just get the TP out in time. I believe that was the Dusa or someone? Or it was the Coddle TP out away from Supernova. When you're, um... When your Bristleback just, well, the enemy Bristleback, sorry, just feels immortal, right? Yep. Your, your carry just gives up. Without the Viper there, yes. Of course, of course, the Viper really helps out. But Rezo, thanks to his Eternal Shroud, which I think he has already. Yeah, there we go. The, uh, it's just so hard to kill him, because they like the magical damage now. On top of that, Life Steel doesn't deal too much physical damage just yet. Like I mentioned, the like I keep mentioning in the, the patch notes, they really reduce his DPS in general, because his attack speed got halved. So it's not really, or his, his passive attack speed really got halved. So he's not really that strong anymore. You can't go for the um, old build where you went for like Desolator and you just chunked someone super easily. Now it's much tougher to actually get the kill, especially against heroes like Bristleback. Because remember that Priest only heals you, he doesn't actually deal damage anymore. It's been the case forever. Argusa is getting really strong now. She's going to have that third ultimate orb up pretty soon as they have found a coddle at the very least. That's going to be a pretty easy kill for them along with the cold snap as our Ember Spirit getting the uh, remnants out very, very quickly. Rari in the meantime will just do about similar as even with the bloodlust, the Dusa still quite lacks the damage here to nuke through a life stealer. We'll see as they get rid of Agdoha for now. How many stuns do we have this game? I feel like I've seen like eight TP outs. I mean... Yeah, not many, honestly, on either team. Yeah, uh, true. On IPG, I have a couple more, mainly the Earth Spirit and the Invoker. But uh, the Invoker just hasn't been present this game at all. For being a Quasvex Invoker, if you told me that he had been playing Quasvex Zord this whole game, I would have believed you. Because his playstyle was much more akin to that kind of Quasvex Zord, farm the mid lane, you know, try to get farm for yourself and be a late game core, than the Quasvex, which is all about ganking lanes and taking early kills. It was all up to the Viper to gank, and Viper's just not that great. Not ganking. He's a very static hero as well. He's much more about taking the lane over. He is, he is. That's why he really excels at the mid lane where it's much easier for him to gank. And bot lane do Earth Spirit in trouble. Ladon is going to have to run the wrong way here. Supernova will complete this TP. There's Young G with the DD rune. Popping the mechanism nice and early. Rooted down here using the wand. Trying to keep himself alive, but not a chance. T will be just dove in underneath his tier 2 tower and killed as if it wasn't there. <laughs> Oh, Searing Chains to catch the Life Stealer. And the Solar Bind as well. Rari. Yeah, might just get away. He does have the Rage anyway, so I don't think he's going to die. But the Dembro with Dezo. Oh my goodness. Dezo and double damage just 
chunking yeah. the Enchantress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a scary game if they get the Enchanted Quiver on him, for sure. Yep. Uh, bot lane, though, those Tier 2 just about here conceded, as uh, long with Rezo, Bloodlusted, Warpath, now level 2, and the Dusa uh, really, really making quick work of that. They're unable to even really start a push uh, in return here in the top lane. Normally, you see the push being mirrored. That's that's generally why it's hard to catch both without picture in picture, but this time, just nothing. They, they push the wave, but realize this tower is already gone. We can't afford to be, lose a fight here because that could be the nail on the coffin for them. Honestly, I don't know how IPG even recovers this game, though. Because to me, Scotty is a turn for do so. Once you get Scotty, you're ready to fight everything, and you're going to murder the Lifestealer so easily because he's not going to be able to rage and walk towards you. He has no Abyss <laughs> Like, he has no Bash. He has nothing to get close to you, right? Me, you might even need to use the Infest Bombs to try to get close to you, but don't have a really good target besides the Earth Spirit. What? It's really, really tough. It's definitely the Earth Spirit's a pretty good target. The risk there is it's not guaranteed, and if you mess up the Rolling Boulder, you basically have killed your core as long with yourself. And also, if you if the stun is just very weak, right? When you, like, an issue with, like, a storm, for example, the mobility is it, is worthwhile, and that Vortex is actually longer than Rolling Boulder. Similarly, with, like, a Centaur or, or Spirit Breaker or whatever, you know, you have a lot of options which have longer stuns, which is what Life Theory needs to hit. As it stands right now, you get Rolling Boulder, you hit, like, three times on the Dusa, and then she's actually a Stone Gaze and you're done. That's true, but you do have the Silence to follow up as well from the Earth Spirit, which is going to be yeah. not quite effective, of course, because Dusa can still right click you back, but at least she's not going to be as fast to activate the stone gaze. But but no, you're completely right. It's it's not the best one. I don't think it's the worst one either. And uh, honestly, what else do I have? Uh, do IPG have to work with this game? It's just uh, maybe really tough, maybe right? Invoker if you want to play that old sneaky way where you would just ghost walk around the map and try and find people. Yeah. I don't know. They need to do something to try and get some kills here and, and get back in this game because it is looking uh, pretty bad for them here at this point. Ladon might be caught as well. Uh, he's going to have a pretty easy rolling boulder down to the low ground, but waiting for him, unbeknownst to him, is going to be his brother, the Ember Spirit. They're going to be able to refresh that, or not refresh it. He misses the silence, Coddle blocking the rolling boulder, and plenty of damage to follow up. That was the weirdest recall. I don't know if you saw that. It was just, he walks in and calls like, nope, get on this side, and Ember's attacking from the other side. Eventually, of course, it gets cancelled because Recall gets cancelled by damage, but still, that's an uh, interesting choice. Anyway, Earth Spread's dead, which allows you to now gank the enemy triangle. You're not really afraid. They don't have many other teamfight abilities because, again, Invoker non-existent, so uh, you don't really Supernova's consider him. Supernova's dead, I think. Yeah, they even bring Kuman, who has a Scotty, which slows uh, Supernova by 50. It's incredible against ranged heroes. And particularly Viper is also really weak to the Scotty. Oh, okay. Chains is like, why? We can just dive this tower. Why the tier not? one's not done yet, but who cares? Oh, how do you tank that sleight of fist? <laughs> I don't know either, to be honest. I think he had a magic stick, me? Check. Yeah, he used the magic wand at the same time as sleight of fist hit him. Interesting. So it seemed like he didn't know damage. Oh. This well, has got a blink dagger, by the way. Yeah, Kyle doesn't care, dude. He knows that this game doesn't even need the Ags, because you're like, dude, <laughs> I have, I just need to go around chakra matching you guys and recalling you to the right location. That's all the card was used for. You could even go shard this game, honestly. Yeah, Young G just continuing to pop out of control as well here. Uh, Skull looking for something. Has the boots of travel, so he's incredibly mobile. 550 move speed. They do connect the rolling bowler there. It's going to be, oh no, the Yule Scepter in time, though. A secondary stun, not oh, enough he's damage. Right. He's going to get the remnant out. Not even the Infest Bomb will do the trick. Rezo now with plenty of stacks of the Warpath and the Bloodlust just running at Antoha. What passive, he says. Untouchable, more like my touchable. Is Supernova now just getting ran down. This is a hero, by the way, that counters him. Not right now, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> not with the BKP, mm -hmm. not with the level difference, the net worth difference. Rezo, I mean, someone said, I think someone in the chat was actually confused and thought Rezo was still playing carry. Oh, he is. Oh, he is this game, he's isn't he? He's a pseudo carry, right? Well, for, for now, until Kuman goes, excuse me, why are you taking my creeps? And then about two hits the entire wave. Exactly. I mean, Kuman has also 5k more than Rezo, by the way. He's truly the most farmed hero in this game by a long shot. There's no way life to can get close to him or even attack him. I didn't know. Oh, there's an invoke in this game, Richie? I, 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 yeah, I mean, you can do a little bit to slow down the push, but I mean, Hellraisers, they're not even stopping for Roche. Why even bother at this point? I, I mean, uh, forget, I mean, actually, you go for Butterfly, and then you go, please, for the Divine Rapier, uh, is what I think really is the build oh, this game for, for the, the game, game, honestly. Cause I well, I mean, that's what the Divine Rapier is for, right? right. What item will help me end the game right now? More damage, Divine Rapier. I agree with you. I don't know, the call is actually more far than the Viper. I didn't even notice this. Oh, <laughs> that is... And Viper is not a hero that likes playing from behind, by the way. Usually as an offlaner, as a Viper, you want to win the lane. That's why the Viper pick, I understood the point, especially against the Bristleback. But if the Invoker didn't get the arc, it was just a really risky draft from MPG, as we mentioned earlier. We liked it because we saw a really good performance game one, but this performance game number two has been a bit lackluster. Uh, Rari might just be dead here. He doesn't have anything to jump into. Might be able to jump into one of the Ancients, and indeed he will, but they have plenty of damage. Supernova now getting ran down by Reza with a BKB. Absolutely nothing to do there. Rari 
Ari is going to look for someone, at least get the disarm. I'm hoping to try and TP. It actually work. gets away. Rezo, in the meantime, actually hasn't gotten any kills. It's Young G on any tier 2 tower for the Earth Spirit. In the meantime, Rezo just running down Antoha. There goes the Earth Spirit. There goes Antoha. And uh, I want to say there goes the chances of winning this game for IPG as well. But I don't, really don't know how they get back into it. They're probably going to go a Roche, and, and then it's going to be, what, divine time for the Dusa? And then what do you do then? Genuinely, this Rush doesn't end the game already, honestly. It's very close. You could, honestly, with this Rush, you could just walk down mid, take the tier 2, take a lane of racks, then go up top, take the lane of racks 2, and then bottom, right? It, there's nothing stopping you. Yeah. Oh, IPG, I don't know what hope you're holding on to this game. And again, I, I, don't, I don't know what Team Boker did this whole game. I was not... I'm not is he going to get caught here? Young G's waiting for him, but won't be able to get the jump. It's a bit risky with only the one remnant. You don't want to really be too foolish and, and jump in like that and give your enemies a way back in at the game for free. Yeah, all lanes pushed in. Invoker doing a decent job of pushing in that bottom one at the very least. But now that Ember's showing up, that's no longer going to be a viable option. Prezzo's BKB is going to be back off cooldown here in just a second. That's going to be an eight-second duration. Rari trying to farm him whatever he can. He's got 2,300 gold in the bank at the very least, but he's even kind of getting his butt kicked here by the Medusa illusions. As well, the real Medusa instead will head to the top tier three and uh, finish off these lane of barracks. Yeah, the melee wrecks will fall, so will the ranged wrecks. Yep, and cutting the waves here is Supernova at least, but it's not going to matter. When you well, it matters because the tier 2 mid, right? That's why. That's that's a good point. That is a good point. It does matter. Thank you for correcting me. That's the only thing that I can see kind of getting into the game. You cut the lanes and you pray that by cutting these lanes you'll get... Oh, wait. Rari? Rari? Stone uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, that's a good... Uh -oh. Yeah, actually, uh -oh. it's DP. It wasn't fast enough. Honestly, it might as well. You have an Aegis, dude. You're not going to die. That was close. That was close. That was Super very close. Super Nova continued to be annoying, cutting another wave. Usually you see a different hero with wings do this, like a Puck, for example. Viper not as mobile here, oh, and I think we're, we're about to see why. You generally don't see Viper go for it. That's a good Greaves, and there's no Coddle nearby, but oh, there's a Yule Scepter yeah, on the end yeah. of this. Yeah. Goodbye, Supernova. Yep, he always has a way to stump your TP. It's a valiant effort, and they're just going to recall him right back in, so it's not like we really lose anything there. No. Rari just doing a little dance here, trying to at least uh, oh, do Rari? something. I don't know about this, Rari, honestly. Look at the damage. Look at the damage, Rari. As I haven't towered still, Deuce is like, either you die or your tower dies. One of the two. For now, it'll be the tower. They'll have yeah. to settle with that one. That tower will fall relatively easily for Hellraisers, and I think they can continue. Nothing is stopping them. Viper's dead anyway. That's your best hero to de-push these lanes. There's no cutting lanes available anymore. All lanes of racks are available, by the way, for, yep. you, to kit, uh, for you to kill. Rezo can just do this for days. Oh, the fire shield as well on top of that. Which is the uh, Ogre Shard, of course. Mitigates a bit of damage, and on top of that, sends fireballs around. Nah, he's totally fine here. And Alrez is going for the slow siege. Ladon looking for something. Unfortunately, he finds nothing. Will get rooted up and killed here by the Medusa Illusions. Has buyback at the very least as Rezo will take that time to now back off the tier 2 tower. Party down. Oh, life stealer. Searing chains. He does rage away. Scotty is helping though. The Heaven's Hopper will stop Medusa from pushing. Them. I mean, they, they can slow this down, Ava, but what do they do? Like, how do you win? There's, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, there's no idea of winning. It's just about keep staying in the game as long as possible. That seems to be your, your tactic. You even Which, missed the impetus attack. I mean, Kuman just like, okay, I, all right. I thought they had damage there, guys, but I guess not. They haven't salberting. But the racks are slowly going down, and nothing is moving this fat deuce from the No, ground. no, she's going to plant herself here uh, and, and really not be looking to move. Rari, I mean, you're trying your best, but she's even hitting objectives while you are. From behind goes Ladon. They're going to jump now on a bounce score. That might be a kill, at least on the one. But the blinding light really doing quite the number there. Rari jumping on in. Stone Looking for the kill. He already used the rage. They will get that one, but that's your hard carry for the position five. Stone Gaze as well. Keeps Supernova from going any further. It's a they don't want to be able to save it, but guess what? He's got buyback as well. There's going to be the whip to slow one down. Disarm cannot be dispelled with that enemy meatball now. It's a spicy one, but not onto anyone. As there's a big silence, at least from the Earth Spirit, who's now died back. Rezo taking a lot of damage off of Rari. Will actually drop. It's the second one to fall here on the side of Hellraisers. But again, Kumon, he's looked better. He's looked worse. And in fact, still has another minute of this Aegis. Yeah, he's fine, dude. That's chakra magic to keep him alive. Not like the Ember got killed either there. You did destroy Rezo, which is a big deal. But you concentrated so much on the enemy offlaner, which is, of course, the tank is here in the game for Hellraisers. Uh, they really stop. Oh, well, maybe Kuban is actually taking Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. Close. Not not including Aegis. It is close. It's hard to say. But regardless, though, my point is that you shouldn't be countering on him. Hey, ideally, you could kill the Emperor or the Coddle or the Ogre, but you're, you're trying to murder the personal bag. just wasted your time. Motuso was just taking your racks and your heroes for free, honestly. Kuban did not seem threatened whatsoever. He's not going to go for the rape here, though. Instead, Daedalus seems to be the option. 
which seems fine. Honestly, Daedalus is okay. Oh, Invoker does have at least one more item, and it's going to be the Hurricane Pike, hopefully trying to do a little bit of range damage. But Invoker carry, not really known for his carrying ability, though, more for his spell casting here. Yeah, Invoker can go in. Like, he, if you had enough levels so you can rotate into an Exhort build right later, that's fine. Oh. There's a smoke. This is going to be maybe a cute attempt here. Askel's going to break the smoke, but now they know something's here. Rari as well, just going to say hello to anyone. Lil is way too fast. He says, Lil me alone, and we'll run even further away. In the meantime, they're going to lose on Doha. Oh, there's the target. There's the jump. Yeah, that was good, actually. Perezzo is here as well. I don't want to punish this. As they go for Ladon in the back lines. Ladon seems to be the target. That's a nice tornado, though. There's status aggression. But BKB on Bristleback. He's done with this. Ascolt is down for the count. As Vanscore tries to help himself out. Near the stone gate is not going to work too well, but it's going to cancel his TP from Lifestealer, and that's going to be enough to Man. send us a team fight. There's a GG. Game number three. Yeah, game number three. I, honestly, that wasn't my favorite game, too. I'm not going to lie. I think that the draft for IPG was not the easiest to execute, but it looked ten times harder than I think it should have been, particularly because of the Invoker's lack of rotations. It was... It, it, I, it just not a non-existent mid laner. I think the Viper pick was a good idea.